Hey everyone, this is Andy Melbuff, and in this video we're going to take a look at a new feature enabled recently in the Desmos Graphing Calculator that will allow us to evaluate negative square roots using complex numbers and also to see visually the complex numbers displayed on our graph canvas. So to begin with, we're looking at my screen here, which is the standard Desmos Graphing Calculator. And over here in the upper right is our graph settings, this little wrench tool. I'm going to click on that. And near the bottom is now available a complex mode. We want to turn that mode on. And that will enable us to evaluate as well as explore graphically some of these complex numbers. So over here on the left in my first expression box, if I want to evaluate a square root, Typically, when we would do this before, we could not evaluate negative square roots. Now we can. I'm going to type in the square root of negative 4. And we can see over on the right-hand side of this expression box, it evaluates to 2i. Also, we see visually a plotted point here on the complex plane. The complex plane has real numbers on the horizontal x-axis and imaginary parts on the vertical y-axis. So we can certainly evaluate square roots here of negative numbers, as we always have done. But some different things we can do with complex numbers. For example, I can type here, you know, actually I'm just going to replace my first one. In my first box, I can also type in points as complex numbers with real and imaginary parts to them. For example, I can type in 3 plus 4i, and we will see that displayed visually over here on the right. I can do a quick click on it to see a temporary label. I can also check the label box here on the left to see that point. Pressing and holding on this icon to the left here pulls up my usual style menu. So I can again do those typical things that I would normally do with Decimals graphing calcula calculator points. I can change the size. I can put you know whatever type of icon I want, as well as color changes, label changes, etc. I can also make it draggable, and when it's draggable, I can move it to a different location here, and you will see it will update on the left in my expression box. If I wanted to assign this to a specific letter as we typically would do in high school mathematics, we might want to call this Z sub 1. And now I can perform operations on this Z sub 1. For example, one thing we may want to explore is the modulus. So there are a couple of ways that we, we can uh, evaluate the modulus of this point. I can use the command ABS and put Z sub 1 in parentheses and this will determine the modulus, the distance from that point to the origin. If you don't wish to use ABS, you can also use the vertical absolute value signs on a keyboard. I have that available right above my enter key. I do shift and a backslash and I can get my vertical absolute value signs to appear, again showing a distance of 5, which we call the modulus with complex numbers. I can also do, uh, I can evaluate complex number operations. So I'm going to create a second complex number. I'm going to call this Z sub 2. And this is going to be 4 minus i. And you will see I get a second point plotted over here on the right. I'll put the label on it as well. And when we assign complex numbers in terms of a variable like this, like this Z sub 2, it's automatically draggable. And if you wish, you can turn off that drag feature here. I'm going to leave mine draggable for right now. And here's what I want to do with those, those complex number operations. I can simply add them together. And we will see our result over here in purple. Let me put the label on it as well. And we can explore with students visually how when we add together complex numbers, we add the real parts of that as well as the imaginary parts of that number. Pressing and holding, I have my style menu here. I cannot make this draggable because it's the sum of two other numbers, but if I choose to adjust either of my 
first two numbers, my sum will adjust in real time as well. Now, if I move my green complex number, my z sub 2, right up to that x-axis, up to that real axis, my complex number now becomes 4 plus 0i, and we can have discussions with students about the meaning of that 0i part. In addition to sums, we can do differences as well. I'm not going to put a difference in there, but we often will want to multiply. So I can do z sub 1 times z sub 2, and I'm using my asterisk key to get the multiplication part in there, and z sub 1 times z sub 2, the product does not show up visually because it's 10 plus 6i, so if I adjust my viewing window, I will see 10 plus 6i over here on the upper right portion of my canvas. In addition to some of those complex number operations that we do, we can also do some other things with the conjugate. CONJ is a command that we will give Desmos to evaluate the conjugate of a complex number. So here I'm evaluating the conjugate of Z sub 1. I'll put a label on it as well and readjusting my viewing window, I see that it is a reflection over the real axis visually, and that's because my imaginary component has changed to a negative. And again, this is all dynamic. I can move these in real time, and you can see any of my previous calculations or evaluations will update in real time as I change that draggable point. One last thing I want to introduce here is the idea of raising complex numbers to exponents. So I can type in, I'll do z sub 1 again, and I'm going to raise it to the power of 2. So I'm going to square that number, apply the label, and here 3 minus 4i is my negative 2 plus i squared. And if you wanted to have students check that out, you could just simply do a z sub 1 times another z sub 1, and we will see that same result. But going further than just squaring, we can do cubing to the, you know, things to the fourth power, etc. I'm going to turn off some of these other ones here so that our screen is not quite so cluttered. So that now we're looking at just z sub 1 and we'll explore some exponents with it. So back down here on the left in my box number seven, I'm gonna go up and replace my squared with a single letter A. And we can add a slider. And I want to adjust my slider to allow A values to go from one up to 10 by step one. And here's visually what we will see as A moves. And I'm actually going to move my original z sub 1. And I have to type it in. It's not wanting to drag for me right there because there's another point right on top of it. I'm going to call this 2 plus 2i. And now as my slider adjusts, here's the value squared. And I have to zoom out a little bit. So 2 plus 2i squared becomes the complex number 8i. When I cube it, it gets further away again, negative 16 plus 16i, and I can keep exploring this relationship, and what happens each time I add a new exponent in there is we are rotating 45 degrees in a counterclockwise direction, which is typical when we raise these complex numbers to powers. So I can go all the way out here to 10, and my result when it's 10 is a huge number that's got a imaginary component only. So I'm just going to zoom out quite a bit till I can see 32,000. Oops, there we are. It's above, not below. There we go. So there's my point there. So these are some new features available now in the Desmos graphing calculator where we can apply the evaluation of complex numbers and explore those relationships with real and imaginary components. Thanks, everyone.